Welcome to Manaki, Ontario, home to Paradise Cove Resort. We are in sunset country. Now, there's an old cliche in the fishing world that says that the muskie is a fish of 10,000 casts. Not here it isn't. They are everywhere. And that's our quarry for this week here on the new Fly Fisher. Giant muskies, smallmouth, and largemouth bass. It's all about warm water species. This big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Ontario lodges and outfitters look forward to welcoming international anglers when it's safe to travel once again. If there's one species of freshwater fish known for challenging anglers, it's musky. These water wolves often evade even the most experienced fly anglers. But to most, they are well worth the effort. Commonly reaching sizes up to 50 inches in length, landing a muskie can truly be the experience of a lifetime, especially on a fly. You're just doing check great. Your drag. It's probably going to take off again. When it does, just put that rod tip yeah. down. Let the run. Let the fish run. Yeah. Okay. Try and gain some line on it, maybe. See there, you go. fly box is out of your way. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, keep pulling, keep pulling. Gain some, gain. Oh, it's going out. It's taking off. Keep hard, hard pressure on it. Yeah, it's good, Jen. You're doing perfect. Yep. Jen is using a 10 weight rod, and it's going to a 60 pound mono. I've got six feet of it, and then a 50 pound bite wire. Nice fish. Okay, keep going, nice Jen. Nice fish. Okay, keep it up. Keep the head up. Lift up. Perfect. Lift the rod tip. Okay. Got it. Nice. <laughs> Oh, oh, that is amazing. I can drop the net underneath it if you want. Okay, fish is free. Put your hand under the belly, right on. While I have had some luck landing these mysterious creatures in the past, Mark is still on the hunt for his first muskie on the fly. Which is why this week, Mark and I have come to Paradise Cove Resort, located in Manaki, Ontario only 150 miles north of International Falls, Minnesota. Paradise Cove Resort sits on the banks of the Winnipeg River system that runs through Northwest Ontario. This area is known for holding tons of massive muskie, which makes it the perfect location for any angler who dreams of landing one of these epic fish. This week, we'll be guided by Dwayne Howe, the owner of Paradise Cove Resorts, as well as his son, Corey Hell. Their years of experience fishing for muskie on this body of water will no doubt be incredibly helpful as Mark and I hunt for this elusive species on such a large river system. I could barely contain my excitement as Mark, Dwayne and I headed out for our first day on the water. Well, good morning. Here we are at Paradise Cove fishing for these giant Winnipeg River muskies. Now, I'm fishing top water to start while Jenna's got a subsurface fly. And what's important when you're fishing as a tandem partner is to have eyes on each other's flies. And it sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. Jenna sees her fly in a certain way. Because of the sun, because of the, the glare off the water, um, she may or may not be able to see a muskie that's following that fly. Now, muskie are inherently curious fish. Um, so. When she's retrieving, I'm watching her fly as well as mine, but I'm not watching the actual fly. I'm watching behind the fly to see if she has any curious muskies that are coming up behind it. They will sneak up and they will check out a fly all the way back to the boat. You have to remember, they are the apex predators in this system. Uh, they're not even afraid of, of the boat, to be, to be honest with you. They'll come up and they'll smash it right boat side. So always have an eye 
on your partner's flies as they're bringing it in, because sometimes you can see what they can't. Musky fishing is a patience game, which isn't easy for any excited angler. Mark and I spent the morning casting, 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 and trying different locations on the river system. However, just when we started to feel frustrated, all of our hard work began to pay off. That one just back right out of the water. See those bubbles against the uh, yep. big back came out of the water. He's on oh, me. The, yeah. Oh. We just had a giant muskie show up right here behind the boat. And I put a fly in front of him. Look at this. And uh, he nosed right up to it and opened his mouth just a little bit and then went away. Now the cool thing is, is that muskies are territorial. So based on the moon set, which should happen around noon, we'll come back and uh, throw something maybe a little different at it. Oh my gosh, what an absolute thrill. Just to see an animal that big, it's insane. Ooh. Buck fever, holy lifting. After the excitement of our musky sightings the previous day, Mark and I couldn't wait to get back out on the water and finally connect with one of these leviathans. Muskies seem to really be sensitive to moonrise and moonset. Uh, I once did a muskie school out of Hayward, Wisconsin with the muskie hunter Jim Sarek, and one of the things I walked away with after that school was how important moonrise and moonset was to feeding muskies. On moonrise and the moonset, as he describes it, you know, you've got a three hour window before and after each of the events where muskies feed heavily. Now today, uh, here in Manaki, Ontario, we have a moon set at 12 o'clock. It's just after 9 a.m., so we're just entering the window of where that six hour feeding window for muskies hit. So if the salooner tables are correct, we should up our chances of catching muskies during that window as the moon is just about to set. For any angler, having a muskie follow your fly or lure is one of the most exhilarating aspects of this sport. They can come in hot, then turn away, or just casually swim behind your fly, then melt off into the depths. Despite these incredible frustrations, it really gets your heart pumping, as Mark is about to experience. Oh, there's a giant muskie right here. Oh my gosh. Right behind the boat. That's a big fish, man. He's gonna eat my fly. Is he gone? Yeah, but he's here. Holy. <laughs> Well, we know where he is. He, had a, he went right to the fly. This is a fly. He went right to the fly and went like this. I caught a lot of fish. That one made me nervous. Hey, Jenna, one of the things about fishing muskies is, and big northern pike is uh, casting big flies is difficult. Um, but there are a couple of ways that you can maximize your distance while minimizing the fatigue on your arm. Um, one way, if you're in a, sh in a short casting situation, is to water load your fly. So simply dump it behind you, let it hit the water, and then use the tension of the water to punch your fly forward. That's, that's a 40-foot cast right there. 
The other way is a cast called a Belgian cast or an open oval cast. And what that is, is I notice that when you cast Jenna, you're very much straight up and down, okay? On your back cast, try dropping your rod tip to the side and sweeping it back. Um, I'll show you here. So off to the side and over the top. What that does is it opens your loops and it allows you to get a great distance all the while keeping the fly away from the rod tip of your rod. So do the water load where you let your fly hit the water, use the tension of the water to load the rod to get it forward, and then do an arcing cast or an oval cast to increase your distance. Give it a try. After all this intense excitement, and no matter how hard Mark tried, the muskie completely shut off. We were now out of their feeding window based on the moonset and had zero luck moving any more fish. Dwayne suggested we switch gears and head to another part of the river to try and fish for bass. Fish? Right off that rock. Better one too, that's fun. We're just at the inflow of this river and uh, of course, the water's a little warmer than the, than the main lake, and the, um, there's a lot of oxygen, a lot of bait fish in here. Oh, there's one. A double header. Perfect. Nice. I cast right where you told me to. Oh, just a nice little guy. Man, I love catching bass on top water. It's so exciting. I'm pretty sure I cast almost exactly where you did, Mark. Yep. So you get with river fish, you know. River fish fight the current their entire lives. Pound for pound versus lake fish, I'll take river fish any day for strength, but not a bad one to start the day. So remember, you don't always have to focus on the muskies. There's all kinds of quarry to play with here in Manaki. Nice fish. Oh, Want the net on that, Jenna? Pardon me? Would you like the net? Yes, I would. Thank you. If you don't mind to tossing it back here. I don't have the opportunity to fish river fish this off often, but man, I forget how well they fight. There we go. There we go. Awesome. I'm gonna get him. There you go, buddy. Back in the water. Wicked. Nice. Right off that rock. Good one, Mark. So one of the cool things about fishing out of Paradise Cove is you can target musky, you can target walleye, you can target smallmouth, which I've got on here now, and you can target largemouth. There's a river near the cove, short drive away. Um, so if the musky aren't playing along, there's all kinds of things that you can do to, uh, to keep you or your family or your buddies busy. Um, and you cannot ever, ever complain about catching smallmouth bass on poppers. That guy came right out of the water for it. Not a giant, but you know what? Doesn't matter, smallmouth bass, Pound for pound, right? There's a big fish under my fly. It just swam away. That was a massive fish. I, it's probably a pike. Nice flying. Just so much fun. <laughs> you come into an inflow of a river. Yeah, nice job. Oh, that's Great a nice fish. fish. So it makes smallmouth bass fishing just so electric. And you know what? Anybody can do it. If you can cast your, your fly out 20, 30 feet, it's all you need. Be able to set a good hook and you're into fantastic smallies in Manaki, Ontario. Oh. Nice, fished the trip so far. Awesome.
Nice two pound fish. Support it always by the belly. There you go. On top water, can't be beat, not at all. On this trip, Mark and I came prepared with a variety of stout equipment. For muskie, we primarily used eight and 10 weight rods with floating and sink tip lines. However, we also had intermediate and full sinking lines on hand in case the conditions changed. The muskie flies that we found most effective at triggering a reaction were the flies that matched what muskies would eat in their natural environment. Walleye patterns, black and chartreuse, or dark green flanks, whitefish or cisco patterns, white with marabou flash, and big eyes, and of course, big mouthed water moving poppers, creating top water chaos attracting patterns. For both large and smallmouth bass, we used both five and six weight rods with floating line. The top water flies we principally used for bass were poppers. The water was still cool enough that smallies were shallow, in oxygenated water and looking up. Large mouth were keyed into frog patterns in the junk. When fishing thick pads, frog patterns with a sky facing hook is key to fishing this kind of structure to reduce weed hangups and to increase your hookup ratio. Paradise Cove, we have one, two, three, and four bedroom cabins, some larger than others, some with two baths, some with one bath. Part of them have air conditioning, and uh, we have uh, boat rentals, marina, restaurant for everybody, and uh, we have lots of uh, people come to Paradise Cove for years now. It's almost 35 years I've been in business here don't have an American plan. We just have housekeeping where everybody takes care of their own cabins. Everything's set up to do your own cooking, coffee pot, microwaves, toasters, everything supplied. And uh, our rates are only 50 a night per person. So people like that. And uh, we have plenty of Americans and Canadians that come and for a weekend, it's only a few hundred dollars, you know, for two people. And, the species that are in this lake that you could catch. Three different types of muskies in here. You got hybrid muskies, you got tiger muskies, and you got uh, clear muskies. Um, lots of pike, lots of northern pike, uh, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, uh, black crappies, uh, whitefish. I mean, they're all over. There's every perch. I offer sure lunch if, if wanted. Um, I usually do like two people minimum in my boat, and then, but I do take extras. Um, usually just call ahead of time. Uh, let's find out if I'm open on those days that you want to come and I'll do the best I can to get you out there. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm on the bow of the boat by myself today. Um, one of the things that our viewers tell us that is most important about uh, the content of the new fly fisher is that what happens on the water is real. Through failures and successes, uh, we don't pull any punches and we don't not show you when things go poorly or when things go well. Case in point, uh, Jenna's not with me uh, anymore on this trip. She's had a family emergency uh, and her grandmother passed away. Um, so I took the day yesterday and drove her to the Winnipeg airport so she could be with her family. Um, so I'm going to do the rest of the show by myself. Uh, we have a, a, major, a major mantra at the new fly fisher that family, that family comes first. So she's pulled the plug, gone to be with her dad and her mom, and uh, we're here to catch some muskies now.
Casting flies for muskies all day can be very taxing and uh, it can take a lot out of you. But there's some choices that you can make when choosing your flies to ease up on that taxation on your arm. Um, the, the basic one is size of fly. Uh, muskies will chase pretty much any size of fly if they're hungry. Um, bigger flies, weighted flies, are obviously harder to cast than smaller and lighter flies. Um, but another major consideration is what the material of those flies is made of, whether you go natural or you go synthetic. Case in point, I have this really nice big rat fly that's tied out of uh, uh, natural uh, rabbit fur and, uh, and a variety of other kinds of hair. Um, it's a great fly, it attracts muskies, but it's really difficult to cast. And the reason why is because it retains water. You know when your dog gets wet and he starts to stink? That's why, is because the dog's hair holds the water in and it gets gross. Well, this fly does exactly the same thing. It holds the water, increasing the weight of the fly, which makes it a lot more difficult to cast. If you have something that is completely synthetic, made out of non-natural material, such as this, the profiles are similar, but this is completely made out of synthetic material and it sheds water very quickly. So two false casts with this fly and it's basically dry all over again. So three of the things that you wanna consider when choosing your flies for musky all day long are size, weight, and of course, the material that the flies are made out of. She's gonna hit it figure out faster, underwater, faster. After our initial muskie sighting that morning, Corey and I ran out of luck, so we switched gears and headed off to fish for largemouth bass elsewhere on the river system. That's a big one. That's a big bass. Now he's gonna get himself wrapped up and tangled. I've cut my leader down. There we go, now we're cooking with gas. Oh, that's a good largey and he's barely hooked. Oh. <laughs> this is one of my most favorite ways to take largemouth bass. Here at Paradise, Paradise Cove on the south end of the lake, there's this fantastic river. I'm not gonna tell you what the river name is. You're gonna have to come and find out for yourself because it has got absolute giants. This is not a, a really big bass, but it is one that if you can take it on top water, it's absolutely fantastic. How do you like that? So here's the fly that I'm using on this, uh, for these largemouth bass on this fantastic little creek, this little river. It's a leopard frog pattern. It's got rubber legs and a, uh, a long tail with a little bit of flashy boo in it. But the reason why this works is that, number one, it's an attractor because it pushes water with this, with this front um, nose. Uh, and we're able to fish it in this junk because the hook actually is pointing up. So once the fly lands, you give it a little twitch, often lands on its side, give it a little twitch, it sits upright, and you bring it back slowly, driving these largemouth bass absolutely crazy. Now the way to fish it is, basically you're looking for holes. Um, so holes and edges. So if you see a spot where there is a hole, um, where there isn't any vegetation, hit it, give it a twitch, fish it back to yourself, and hang on tight. Fishing for largemouth bass in, uh, in the slop or in the, in the pads and the grass, um, you need to modify your, your typical bass leader to be able to do it effectively. Um, you know, a nine foot bass leader, tapered bass leader, is not gonna have the backbone for you to pull these big fish out of, 
out of sticky conditions. Um, so on a nine foot leader, I generally cut back four or five feet from that leader uh, to where the taper begins on the butt, uh, then tie that thinner section on um, to your fly. That gives you the stoutness and the ability to pull those fish out of the out of the weeds that you need. If you don't, you're just gonna break your leader off and um, lose your fly. I saw the swirl. Wash behind that real good. There it is. Oh, it, it is, is a, a baby musky. Yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> it's a little male. Baby musky. How fun is that? A little male. Yeah, that was a little hybrid. Well, Corey said, let's switch back to the uh, Blue. to the black bug. Well, despite our best efforts, we were unsuccessful in landing a musky on fly. As experienced musky hunters will tell you, that's part of the pain and the pleasure you derive from this incredible species. Exhilarating moments of intensity and adrenaline followed by the true agony of defeat. Yet, for illogical reasons, we keep coming back to great locations like Paradise Cove Resort to try and successfully hunt this ultimate game fish. Because it's not easy. And that is the true attraction of muskie. We'll come back and try this again. We just have to. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orbis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Stay safe, stay healthy. Ontario will be here waiting for you when it's safe to travel.